My name is John Bimmerly and I'm the Instructional Technology Coordinator here in Sulphur Springs ISD. As we take a look at the tablets, there's a couple things that I want to make sure you guys understand about them. The first thing is, you've got what's referred to as a uh, Windows Metro app. In order to use these, you're going to have to have a personal Microsoft account. Now, if you're over 13, you have the right, if you and your parents agree to it, to make your own personal Microsoft account and use the Windows apps the way you want to. Now, some of the apps will work without the Windows or without the Microsoft account, others won't. Like the Mail app, a lot of times you're going to have to go ahead and put in a personal account first, then you can always add in the school issued account that you have created for you already. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. When you click on the Start menu or the Start button, which is down here, this little Windows button here, uh, or if you go to the desktop, but when you click on that, it's going to take you to the desktop. So we've tried to set it up so it's as familiar as it can be for those of you that are used to using a Windows 7 laptop. So the Windows button down here at the bottom center of the screen, when you click on that, will take you to the desktop. Now, once you're on the desktop, this looks works just like any other computer that you've used here in the district, with a couple little exceptions. But with that in mind, you now get the traditional start button or start menu over here, although some of the options are a little bit different. Now, you can click on the Windows button again in the bottom left-hand corner to make that, that menu go away, or when you click on it, at the very top of the list is the Windows 8 tile, uh, the start screen is what it's referred to as, and you can click on that and go back to the Metro tiles. Now most of what you're going to be doing you can work with the desktop and you don't have to do anything with these apps if you don't want to. For those of you that get into creating personal accounts, I will be sharing with teachers some different things that you can be doing uh, in your class using apps, but those apps we're going to right now focus on using as a traditional laptop rather than worrying about the Windows 8 piece because of the fact that it requires that, that goofy account setup. So there's two different things you're going to have with accounts. The Microsoft personal account, which like I said is something that you guys can create on your own, or the account that we've created for you using the SSISD.net uh, domain name. That's a Microsoft business account and all students in 6th through 12th grades will have a business account and I'll go into that in more depth like I said. So the Windows tiles when you click on them, if you try to enter your school account it may not work. Okay, Just understand that it's looking for that personal account. There's nothing wrong with your device, that's just the way it is. Now when you're back here on the desktop, you have the options to go ahead and open up Internet Explorer and use that, or you can go to the app. Just understand that you may want to work with both of those and, and kind of uh, realize that there is two different ways that you can access the Internet. So again, I can click on the little icon down here in the bottom left hand corner uh, to start that up on the desktop version. The Windows 8 version is going to be right up here. It's a tile and you can click on that tile uh, and use it. It's just it's going to give you a little different experience. Now something that seems really simple is charging the device. Now a lot of you have cell phones and things and you charge that. Just remember that this micro USB connection piece that you have only fits in this one way. And if you force it in and you bend the prong in there, your device is going to have to be taken up and returned uh, for repair. And that process may mean that you're out of a device for a while. So be very careful when you're charging it. Also, the recommendation is that you're going to charge this every night and you will leave your charger at home. You should, your device should make it through the entire day on one charge that was charged the night before. Your teachers will have a few charges in the room, so some of you that may run out of charge by the end of the day uh, can go ahead and take a look at uh, borrowing that charger while you're in that classroom. But realistically, you need to charge it the night before and come with it fully charged. One thing I would recommend is turn it off while you're charging it. The device will get very hot sometimes as you're charging it if you're trying to use it. So the best practice is going to be to uh, turn the device off completely, not just put it to sleep, and to go ahead then and, and charge it during that time. Charging it overnight, unplug it the next morning, and you should be good to go until uh, at least 4 o'clock the next day. Alright, these devices have tracking software on them and that tracking software needs to be kept on the device um, and really anything that you do to the device to take off the things that we have in place to manage that will be a violation of your terms and we will take the device away from you and you'll probably be uh, punished by the principals. So just remember that you do not need to take anything. You do not need to uninstall or in most of it won't let you but you do not need to be uninstalling things that are on the device uh, that we've put on there. Basically, if you're not sure what you're doing, don't do it. That's the easiest explanation I can give you, and you need to take that, that warning seriously.
because we will take up devices when we find that you've done things that you're not supposed to. Now, if your tablet is lost or stolen, you need to report it to your campus principal immediately. At that point, the principals will get with us. We'll start looking to track your device. We'll figure out if it's in the building still or if it's off, off campus somewhere else with that tracking software. Within 48 hours, if we have not been able to track your device down and you haven't been able to find it, at that point, we'll issue a police report and that police report will then be given to you uh, for you to take home and have your parents sign and fill out some other information. Once you've returned that form to us with your parents' signatures and all the other information filled out, we'll begin the process of getting you a new device. Now, if you think your device isn't working properly, we're gonna have a form linked off of our campus website. Make sure that you have that link uh, through your fifth period teachers. You'll fill out that form and that will alert us. We'll get an email and then we'll go ahead and start the process of getting to you and figuring out what we need to do to help you with your device. Some of the things are very simple fixes. Others uh, may require us to take the device up. If it's something that we can take up and give you a loaner device for the short term, we'll try to do that if they're available. If we don't have one available to give to you, then you're gonna be without the device while we're looking to repair it. Please understand that when we repair devices, one thing that we may do is wipe the device completely. And if we do that, you're gonna be stuck without uh, anything that you have saved locally. So, and by locally, I mean if you save it on your desktop. So make sure you're saving to your X drive, which is found on the desktop, just like it is on any of the school computers, or that you're saving to your OneDrive, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes also. Now, sometimes your device is just gonna do some goofy things. All I can say to you is if you're throwing in your backpack and the power button's being pressed and you're not shutting down the device properly and your, your screen is being left on and it's got things pressing up against it, you're gonna have problems with it. So one recommendation is when you put in your backpack, make sure that you put it with the power button facing up. That way you've got fewer things that are gonna be brushing up against it. You also need to make sure that you, uh, in a perfect world, shut down. Uh, but in between classes, that may not make as much sense. So you're at least putting the device to sleep, put it in again with the power button facing up so that hopefully it stays asleep while it's in your backpack. Now, if you've plugged in a USB keyboard or a mouse to it, sometimes you'll find that your on-screen keyboard will not pop up. At that point, all we'll have to do is plug in a, a mouse or plug in a keyboard to it, and you'll be able to get it, you know, to get logged in with it and then at that point your device will work fine once you unplug the keyboard. We'll try to make sure that each teacher has at least one keyboard in their classroom that could be used for these purposes. Other goofy things that come up may require you to fill out that form uh, for a troubleshooting ticket. At that point we'll again get to you as quickly as we can. Now you get to make a selfie lock screen and this is something that we're going to have principals in force and your teachers will check on an occasional basis. Also, if we check on it and we see that you haven't done this and followed the rules the way we're asking on it, then we're gonna go ahead and, and discipline you accordingly. Now, to do the selfie lock screen, there's just a couple simple steps. Number one, you need to take a selfie, and I think you all know how to figure that out. Now, that selfie needs to be with you only. We don't want you and a group of people. We need to easily be able to look at the device once we turn it on and figure out who, who it belongs to. We'll be able to look up the numbers on the back, but this is just a simpler way for teachers to be able to get devices back. Or more importantly, as you're in a classroom setting and your devices get mixed up, this is an easy way for you then to make sure that you're picking up the right device. So the selfie lock screen, what you're gonna do is swipe in from the left side or from the right side of the screen. And when you do that, you can get the settings. You're gonna click settings, and then you're gonna change the PC settings by clicking on the link down there. Now you'll see I've made a, a beautiful one here and I'll give you a nice close-up of that with my eyes crossed and everything. But all you have to do once you have that selfie made is click the browse button right down here. After you click browse, you're going to then find the, the picture that you wanna use. Again, it needs to be a picture that only has you in it and that clearly shows your face and, and lets a teacher identify easily who you are. If you've got a bunch of other nonsense on there for your lock screen, we're gonna take your device up and we'll penalize you however we want to do that at that point. So please make sure that you get your selfie lock screen set up according to what I just described in this video.